I think it's recording now. Okay, so yeah. All right. Um, as uh, sort of temporary acting <laughs> chair here, uh, I've called the March fifteenth meeting of the Energy Advisory Committee uh, to order. Um, seek to approve the the minutes from the February eighteenth meeting. Uh, we have three three members currently attended, so we have a quorum to to approve and move on. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Right. I'll second that. All right, motion passes. Um, the meeting minutes from the February eighteenth, two thousand twenty one meeting are approved. Uh, currently, I do not see any members of the public uh, speak here to speak, so. Past that, and um, let's move on to the next agenda item, which is continued discussion on vision uh, for the Energy Advisory Committee, um, which I guess sort of encompasses some of these next pieces that are that are on the agenda. Um, so yeah, I don't know if Misty had specific things she was going to sort of prod or lead us on, but. Um, the discussion ideas from third parties. Let's see. Well, I don't know. It's, it's, was there any more? Steven, I know you had that community solar. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any more from that. I think that was probably just a legacy item. So I don't yeah. think we need anything from that. All right. So there's some other third party stuff coming up here. Um, the solar ordinance update, we'll wait to see if Councilor Peak is able to join us to talk more about that. Um, you know, just my quick outreach to him earlier this month or after the last meeting, um, I reached out just to talk about the uh, community aggregation. Um, and but he also mentioned in his email, you know, the solar ordinance that uh, councilors Zaret and Darby are working on. And I guess that he's you know, familiar with and maybe working with them a little bit, but they're kind of the leaders, but he's hopefully going to be here to talk about that. Um, and he did confirm for me that there's currently no discussion going on around municipal aggregation um, at the city council level, um, and as far as we know, in the mayor's office. So um, that's not officially on the agenda, but so we could count considered, you know, new or other business. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, just you know, from a from a personal standpoint, I think you know the municipal aggregation is is one sort of big picture thing that we could start working on uh, as a committee and working with the city council and, and the mayor's office to to start the process and really figure out what the first steps are. I know we the, there's lots of towns that have done done this throughout the state. Um, I think I shared you know some of those and some of the uh, Greenfield as an example of a similar sized town. Um, that has already gone down that that road. Um, so, you know, probably a discussion for the more full, you know, board if everybody is able to uh, plan and talk around that. But, but definitely something I'd like to see, you know, added to the agenda going forward. Um, as again, you know, something that you know, a big picture item that we could really be front and center on as far as initiatives go. Um, I don't know if we have any more info on the, the Honeywell RFP. Um, my name is attached to that, but I, I haven't had anything to do with that so far. And um, I don't know if there's any anything new since the last meeting on that. Um, Marin, you're, you're the one person who's, the other person who's here whose name is attached to that. Yeah, there was supposed to be a follow-up meeting, but I don't remember it actually getting scheduled or... Um... Right, I think it was going to be that the um, that we're going to follow up with the, the somebody in the mayor's office to help facilitate that meeting with them and with us. Yeah. Okay. And then I don't think I don't remember ever hearing anything about it actually getting scheduled. Yeah, uh, then maybe Scott was was taking the lead on that since his name is sort of first on that agenda item. Um, we can ask, and hopefully, again, a couple other people will will show up here to shed some light on this. Um, cause I'm, yeah, I'm out in the dark on that one right now. Um, and he, Scott would also be the person to, 
get uh, with the Eversource account monitoring. I know he has made some progress with that, <clears throat> you know, actually getting all those accounts and maybe working to get that that set up. But um, again, we probably have to look to him for a more complete update unless somebody has something to add. Um, so moving on to sort of the social media piece, which we've, uh, you know, Stephen, you want to talk a little bit about the, the school update and the video? I think that was great. Uh, see yeah, sure. So um, I reached out to um, Patrick Bowe and um, Bert Gardner, uh, the head architect at, uh, the, for this new school project, and I got in on their monthly update. And so we toured the school and we were able to go through and focus on energy efficiency type of stuff. Um, so we had our discussion and got to, it was cool because I got to tour the building. Um, but yeah, we had that come out and then he posted that a couple of days later and then that got shared with our Facebook thing. So I saw like several hundred people saw it. So, so it was a good thing. Um, and then I saw that Scott's also done some additional posting to the Facebook group, um, including like with solar. And I saw we got our first comment from somebody that wasn't a member of the committee. So <laughs> that was nice to see too. Definitely positive progress. Yeah. And I should start taking those and start sharing them maybe to some of the East Hampton related groups too, you know, with mindful of spamming things around, but um, just as a way to yeah. get the energy committee uh, name out there and maybe get a few more people to follow or like the page so that as we you know, continue to post stuff, they can see. And yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, suggestions from the public or ideas from the public on things that we should be working on focusing on be valuable just to sort of help us you know guide i think in our 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 work and our time and you know, things, things we want to spend time with um, jamie maybe uh for jamie webb maybe it'd be good to have a posting of um the solar post that scott had to the planning department website yeah i can do that i am um, not very active on facebook anymore so mm -hmm. um so, so sometimes it, it helps for these, uh, you know, actual in-person reminders to cross post yeah. something. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can I can do that. Yeah, because I think the school video one was shared pretty much amongst all the major East Hampton groups just by Patrick sharing it anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, like the solar one, that'd be a good one to share on the planning department. And then Jamie. Uh, like that maybe you could share it on to the, like the East Hampton family and all those ones, the other East Hampton general groups. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely do that. Um, yeah. I know, you know, Scott's going to take in the lead on that. I was going to try to see if we had other specific ideas. I know we, you know, last time we brainstormed a few and we got that document to, to put some ideas in. Um, I've had a few other things come up that uh, share. I think last time we kind of decided too that, a small small committee whether scott and me or scott and somebody else could could be you know okay to just sign off on most things that are uncontroversial uh that aren't you know from a particular you know uh promoting a specific company or a specific you know political aim or anything like that so as long as we can keep things relatively uh focused on you know services that are offered things that are available to people um the you know just cutting data that sort of thing is useful. Um, continue to do that. So, yeah, I think you know a couple a couple posts a month is probably the, the what we should be aiming for. I think that's probably the most we want to, you know, be doing. I think that any more than that risks you know, either tuning people out or just you know being a little bit overkill. Um, unless there's really really interesting things to share, in which case we should absolutely do that. But. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So I mean, hopefully there'll be more opportunities for us to do some, some video stuff perhaps around, around energy initiatives um, around, you know, maybe another, you know, school update if, as the solar array is getting, you know, going in place at some point down the road, um, be able to get some, some more things on that. I think that's those you know, videos. Great uh for this type of stuff so it's a little more dynamic it's a little more engaging with people and tends to i think probably get more attention mm -hmm. um okay 
so next on the agenda right now, solar siting reform for Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Uh, it has my name on it, but I think Jamie Webb, you were the one who shared that. Yeah, so I think I'm actually uh, 10 and 11. The webinar is the solar siting reform. Right. Um, and that's gonna happen. Um, it's through the Citizen Planner Training Collaborative. Um, it's gonna be on this Wednesday um, from noon to 1.30. I sent it a link to the uh, Energy Advisory Committee, so hopefully everyone got it. I can resend it um, if you did not. Um, but basically, um, it's a way for, it's, it's just a webinar to help um, people get up to speed, I think, about some of the issues um, that are currently um, going on across the Commonwealth um, for, um, solar that are that that sort of impact solar energy and then the um the zoning ordinances and mm -hmm. it's just timely with um the um review of the solar energy ordinance that the um council's going through so i think it sort of um makes sense for as many people in east hampton who are going to be involved in that um ordinance review to go to this meeting and or go to this webinar um if there's any questions about it, I can try to answer. I don't honestly know a lot about it other than just what they, you know, the, the overview of it and what I just said. But, um, and I, as I said, I'll uh, resend the link to everyone after the meeting today. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know from the standpoint of, you know, the solar industry siting is an increasingly important issue as there's more, you know, more and more of these larger scale projects being put in and the, you know proximity to things and try to find sites and um just one thing i do know uh you know, i think one of the things in the siting reform was about you know environmentally sensitive lands and wetlands and and those sorts of things trying to make sure they're avoiding those sorts of environmental pitfall yeah. repercussions and if anyone has seen there was a a, a solar array in Williamsburg that got put in a couple of years ago that uh, the state sued the company, the developer that put it in and recently won a million plus dollar settlement because it was some degradation of the land and I think uh, you know, erosion and among other things and, and stuff that spilled into the local local waterways as a result of some shoddy work or lack of controls or things like that. So um, it's definitely something that can happen. Uh, and, you know, as we've got a lot of uh, you know, projects going into the most recent, the more recent one by Whitebrook there, you know, it's a, pretty close to a lot of wetlands and, and other potentially environmentally sensitive things and uh, definitely important. Yeah. I think my name maybe got attached to this because I responded to that when I shared the, um, the state level uh, solar uh, legislation that's being being considered that's very similar to I think what what uh, the local councilors are talking about in terms of zoning there so there are, you know the state is also looking at some requirements around solar uh, for new development new residential and commercial development um, so I wanted to share that and share that with the councilors as well in case they weren't aware because there's probably a lot of overlap between those in terms of like the types of projects that would be covered um and you know it may i don't i don't know how you know how it may, might make sense to proceed at the local level if there's a state initiative going on that covers a lot of the same ground but yeah uh, i i think that in this case because they're still in discussions about what that's going to look like it's going to take some time for it to go through the legislative state's process and mm -hmm. the city should go ahead and do what we're doing and then if there needs, if the state passes something that what the city's um, sort of gone afoul of uh, by the subsequent, then then we can correct it at that point in time. Mm. But where there's momentum to do something now, and the state process might take a lot longer. True. I don't think it makes um, a lot of sense to pin our hopes that that what they'll pass at the state level will, you know um actually do deal with the issues that we we need to take care of in east hampton mm -hmm. no that seems a pretty reasonable uh way to look at it and 
yeah, certainly this, the city level is probably a little more nimble in terms of getting things done quicker. And, and I was you know, looking forward to, to getting an update today on, on, you know, from somebody about what that looks like and where we are in the process here uh, and what sort of, what sorts of input we might be able to have on that. But, um, you know, at this point, it seems like we may have to, to push that to the next meeting perhaps. And um, I think we were hoping that we would be able to do that this meeting and then the next meeting, maybe invite people from the mayor's office to, to come and talk and just like, you know, think like a little bit big picture about energy stuff for the city, but um, maybe we'll try to push the, the solar uh, legislation, local ordinance, local zoning uh, to the next meeting. And then we can look at you know, doing something with the mayor's office in, in May, I don't know. Um, yeah. And so I just wanna to add to that as well, that the, um, the planning board and the ordinance subcommittee, they're gonna be meeting on April 13th. Um, to, they're gonna have a special meeting um, to discuss the ordinance that, they're, that, that has been proposed and the, the, the recommendations that have been brought to them mm. to date. So um, it would be great to have members of the Energy Advisory Commission there to um, speak to that um, and hopefully they'll be able to send out some draft language in advance of that meeting. Okay. Um, but I don't know that we're gonna have a lot of time uh, to discuss it within the Energy Advisory Committee before that meeting, um, just because the timing, the, the, there, haven't, there haven't been any subsequent drafts other than that original one, but I okay. do know that they're working to um, sort of revise it a bit. Um, and then, like I said, they'll just be discussing it on April thirteenth. Okay, and, and I, that'll be and that'll be a an, an evening early evening meeting, either five or six o'clock. I'm not sure. Um, as soon as I get more information about it, I will of course uh, email it to the committee here. You said the sixteenth. Uh, the thirteenth, I believe it's a it's a Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Um. I forget from the last meeting, it's not on here. I don't have it in my calendar. Like the tentative date for our next meeting, do we know if it was going to be April 12th or 19th? Those Monday. Um, yeah, I think or it was, it's supposed to be, so the, the, the regular scheduled meeting would be the 19th, but I believe that's a um, Patriot Day. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to, work right. around that. I think that we can have that discussion uh, by email. We can do like a doodle poll or something like that to see what works for everyone. Um, having a, a discussion outside of the meeting to talk about the meeting dates is actually not a violation of the open meeting law. Okay. So it might be fault if we can't, because then we could at least, if we got the draft language of that ordinance before the 13th meeting, we individually could read about it. We about it on the twelfth internally at the committee, and then so that way on the thirteenth we could speak on behalf of the committee as opposed to, you know, if we don't have for the thirteenth we really talk about it on behalf of the committee because we haven't talked at the committee yet about it. Yeah, I just I don't expect to see like I I would just be surprised that the draft language comes out like more than a week in advance of that. So, so if you even came out, you could individually read it and then yeah. talk about it on the 12th. It wouldn't be like a full endorsement. We could just say we've at least reviewed it and discussed it, and it seems like it's along the right lines type of thing. Um, yeah. So somebody that would call in on the 13th could talk on behalf of the committee saying that, you know, yeah. we in general get in the direction that it's going and that kind of thing. All right. Um, so I'll... I'll um coordinate with misty to try to make sure that we're scheduling for april 12th at five o'clock okay. does that work with the does that work for everyone present today the 12th at 5 p.m which works for me yes it should for me yes i believe so okay great so then we'll just uh see if everyone else can make it um tentatively scheduled for that right oh yeah this is that is not item 12 on the agenda actually so yeah. um, <laughs> beyond that maybe we'll 
I think we're just yeah shooting for the third Monday of each month, right? Which yeah for May I think, be okay. We're not running up against any holidays there. Yeah, and I think we're good for the rest of the year at that point. Right. Okay. So let's tentatively say April twelfth, and I think May seventeenth would be the next one. Okay. We'll work with that as a thing. Um, Jamie Webb, I should ask if you're taking minutes. I realize I don't know. We have our usual minute taker here, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not actually taking minutes. Um, I figured we were recording it, so okay. Well, someone someone will have to go back and reread the redo, redo it, but we can figure that out at, um, after the fact. I think we can cobble something together here. I think yeah, not a lot of new activity here, unfortunately. Yep. It looks like a short, it'll be a short meeting anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Um, let's see, I guess uh, the shared document for committee use, something that we've put together last time, right? We've got a couple, one or two that we've now, you know, established to to use for social media posts or just kind of other other items of, of interest. Um, I guess that we can move on to if there's any, well, is there anything we've, we've other old business that we haven't covered or things or follow-ups to anything? I'm all set. Okay. Marin, we're all good from your side. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, there's a bunch of pieces going on, but we need more of our members here to mm -hmm. get, dig into them. Yeah. Um, okay, so then are there any new or other business? Uh, all set. Yeah. I have one other link I was going to share at some point. It's about some you know, new vistas in uh, like bus uh electric vehicle electric bus transportation for schools and, and things like that and like and some new models that uh allow uh towns and cities to utilize these without any upfront costs so this is kind of like a long-term view thing i was kind of interested in that um from the school standpoint you know around here i know busing tends to be a contentious issue it's uh you know limited not as many people get to use it as what they would like and it's expensive it's a big item for for the school budget. Um, so anyway, just uh, just something that crossed my path that I was curious and maybe discussing at some point, but maybe send something out, we can put it on the agenda for for the next time. Uh, if there's that again, but what, what exactly about busing? I mean, what are you looking at? So um, I'll have to send you the link. Hold on a second, let me pull it up. Um, Convenient that Mary, both committees would be very useful for that. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I was definitely thinking that. So um, there's this a company that uh, basically owns and operates the buses, and will they don't use the, so the town doesn't need to like own and operate them. Um, it takes on the it takes on the financing and management of the fleet uh, in exchange for a fixed annual leasing fee, um, and it's all electric. Uh, it's actually a, a Massachusetts-based company. And have you looked to see whether or not they're Western Mass, though? Because that's the part of the problem is a lot of these companies are not actually out here in Western Mass. Well, it's, it doesn't matter. I don't know where they are, but their big contract was with a, a school district in Maryland. Um, so they're working all over the place. OK. I mean, so the way that that process works is that, that we are coming up shortly on the end of our current contract. Okay. Um, I think that we've just this year we may be and i think the way that a contract works is i think it's three years and then one and one and i think we're ending our third year this year okay. um the problem is, is that in western mass there's like two or three companies yeah. so the city processes that we put out an rfp um and then companies have to bid mm -hmm. um and to do exactly what you're saying we don't own our own buses we're contracting right. out the services um so of course we i would certainly support an all ev bus situation i just i would be very surprised if they're actually in western mass um just because there's not as many uh things out here uh -huh. um not as many companies and stuff but so 
yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's the type of thing, right? And I don't know if we have a, a large enough, you know, use to, to go on our own with something like this, or if it would be the type of thing where we would need, you know, maybe some partnerships with other local school districts to make it big enough to work or something like that. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's you know, kind of pie in the sky in my 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 eyes at this point but it was just kind of a curious an interesting uh thought you know to in the way their model seems to be you know good in the sense that it's kind of budget neutral at the very least up front and then you know the, the savings are long term over the course of, of a contract so um would you, you know, follow yeah. up with them and just see if they're in this region and interested um to know to be notified when our rfp goes out we could certainly include them um i'll send you the link to this it's from a you know it's a green tech media thing that i came across a couple weeks ago i was going to send out and but i'll i'll send it to the group to so you all can look at it um you can look at the company but yeah i can certainly reach out or do a little more research on that if there's you know if it's even a possibility yeah yeah i mean i think it'd be a good idea to reach out to them just mm -hmm. if i have the energy and say we you know we know that our school bus contract is coming up and just kind of get do like an, an RFI almost of saying, you know, yeah, would you be willing to do something in Western Mass? And if so, you know, we have what, Marin, seven to 10 buses, depending on the new school with how we're going to have to, the location changes, what, who has to be bused and stuff like that. So exactly. We're currently using space. seven and we could, yeah, I mean, okay. So could possibly number of buses that would have to be part of a contract and if they say 20 mm -hmm. then we can think we talk to northampton right. and they'd be interested or hampshire regional or mm. you know any other number of towns near us and go from there okay yeah one other thing that's mentioned in the article is they did their first deal which was the, with the city of beverly massachusetts um, which is for 27 buses so that's a just a, you know one one example, I guess, of something they've done. And then the one for Maryland is much bigger because it's for the whole county. Yeah, that's yeah. why, again, like the likelihood that they're in our region or that they're going to take on somebody our size is unlikely, but certainly interested in finding more information. So, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll report, I'll find out, report back, and we can put it on the agenda for, for next time if there's something there. Sounds good. Um, okay. So then let's see, that's my new business. Anybody else have new uh, or other business? I'm all set. I'm all set too. All right. Um, Jamie, anything else from your side? Nothing else. Nope. All right. Well, we gave you know, 535. Um, we have, fortunately, we're not able to be joined by Council to Peak uh, and um, a couple other members missing, so um, it's too bad. I make a motion. You guys should do adjourn. <laughs> do I have a second? I'll second that. <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn passes. The meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. We can stop recording, and this may be the end of my time.